Good afternoon, friends. Stephen and Yana Benu with Israeli News Live, and we're joined today with a very special guest, Liz Thompson, uh, and she's going to share with us some very amazing insights from her journey, her path that she's been on as a Christian. And so, Liz, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us here today. Yes, welcome, Liz. And I just want to add to this that we're doing series with uh, Christians who came out of Zionism. So this is a more kind of specific journey that Liz was on. Uh, so we can't wait to hear her story. So welcome, Liz. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with both of you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you were you were Zionist Christian. Um, I don't want to say worshiping Israel, but you supported Israel. Yes. So this is my first experience speaking to an online audience. So I'm a little nervous. So if, if it's okay with you. I prepared a little a, a summary statement that's three minutes long. Is, sure, is it sure. okay if I just read that? That way I won't stumble over my words and ramble. And <laughs> well, so if, it, if it helps you any to know, uh, when Yana speaks at conferences, that's exactly the way she does it. She writes everything out so that, that way it stays more comprehensive and concise so yeah no and problem focused yes yeah, so right. go ahead please right. so <laughs> if you don't mind i'll just it's about three minutes long okay go right ahead. all right so i was born into a protestant christian family in 1960 my father and grandfather a high degree freemason both served on the deacon board at first baptist church when i was around seven or eight my father decided to join a non-denominational bible church it was at this time that I began to learn dispensational eschatology and a futurist interpretation of the book of Revelation. I recall the pastor's wife teaching me the timeline, including the rapture, seven-year tribulation, and the millennium. At age 10 or 11, I read Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet Earth. I couldn't put it down. It read like a sci-fi novel. During the first two decades of my life, I was admonished to support Israel unconditionally in order to be blessed and avoid punishment. We didn't have the internet at that time. All we had were our pastors, Schofield Bibles, Hal Lindsey, and Walter Cronkite. I attended Colorado Christian University and Dallas Theological Seminary, both staunch Zionist institutions to this day, I believe. After my husband, Steve, and I transferred to Denver Seminary, my journey out of the cult began. One Sunday morning in 1988, the Holy Spirit opened the door and the first ray of light shone through. A member of our church, who was an ambassador to Bahrain, spoke to the congregation about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the oppression of the Palestinian people. A man in the congregation stood up and yelled at him with vitriol. I thought to myself, well, this man is an expert on Middle East foreign policy. Perhaps we should at least be respectful and listen to his perspective. From that moment on, I began to question tenets of evangelical subculture and its cult leaders like Bill Gothard and Jerry Falwell. Two friends, Janie and Karen, encouraged me to follow the content of scholars like Norman Finkelstein. I read books by Israel Shahak and Elon Pape, documenting the horrors of the Nakba, the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, and the racial supremacy of the Talmud. I learned a land without a people for a people without a land is a myth. I listened to personal testimonies from IDF soldiers like Mikko Peled, son of the first Israeli general, and Gilad Atzman. Other influ influential people include journalist Gideon Levy, Max Blumenthal, and Michael Hoffman, Pastor Chuck Baldwin, and of course, Stephen Yana Benoon. In 2015, I traveled to Palestine. I visited Aida refugee camp near Bethlehem, spoke with Palestinian people, and witnessed the harsh reality they faced under the occupation. 
Now as an Orthodox Christian, I am learning to read the Old Testament with a Christocentric lens and seek the wisdom of the early church fathers who warned against Judaizers, as did St. Paul in the book of Galatians. In the words of St. Paisios of blessed memory, if they'd only paid a little attention to the sacred scriptures, no one would remain a Jew, religiously speaking, that is. Judeo-Christianity is truly an oxymoron. Okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> Amazing. I, I, I just beautiful. I mean, few things came out. Be beautiful. What you said is just you summarized it perfectly. And you mentioned cult that you were coming out of cult, which it is a cult, mega, mega, huge cult. And you named several key figures that I keep telling people to listen to. And those are Jewish, those are Israelis. Yes. Yes. And, and, and those are not like what they call Gentiles, which I, I, I kind of don't like that word anymore because the more and more we came out of Zionism, the more I see there is no distinction in Christ and, and to divide people to Jews and Gentiles is just to support them. Right. You know? it, so this is like that two tier system that they're promoting. Um, but you mentioned Gideon Levy, Nico Pellet, uh, this, these are the people, Ilan Pape, uh, I forgot his name now, hold on, uh, this saxophone musician, saxophone. Oh, G uh, Gilad Atzman. Gilad Atzman. Yeah, Atzman, yes, we actually interviewed him one time. He, he's amazing, mm -hmm. he suffers greatly, like they will yes. even can't, like cancel his concerts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, it's, and he's Jewish, <laughs> you know? Right. And so just because he tells the truth about Palestinians and, and Israel, Israel in general. So, uh, and, and you mentioned Gideon Levy, which this is one I recommend, but there is one more I wanna say, and it's David Sheen. That's oh, yes. Yes. right, David Sheen, uh, he's got my attention because he's such a smart intellectual journalist and just the way he can show whole thing in the history and everything that's happening is quite amazing. So that's another one just on the list, but you gave a beautiful list for people. So you kind of started to tell us how you came out, like you were a small girl and uh, enchanted with all of these um, dispensationalist stories of Armageddon and all of that. Because <laughs> it does, yeah, like you said, it does read like a sci-fi. Sci-fi, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a good story, you know, no wonder they made millions and millions of dollars selling these books, The Great Planet Earth. I mean, the, the man became multi-millionaire out of a story that never happened. <laughs> I mean, there was Tim LaHaye left behind, and he, he, I believe his series came out in the 90s, I think, 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. Uh, and you also mentioned something. You said that you started to read the Old Testament with Christocentric glasses, lenses. So why don't, why don't you talk to us a little bit, talk a little more, expand a little yeah. more on your journey, because you, you, you said it so beautifully. Uh, expand a little more on your journey to uh, out of Zionism. Uh, well, let me. Uh, I I don't have a lot of of actual Old Testament references, but uh, I do have one here. But um, from what I understand, from what I've learned, uh, Old Testament prophecies were reinterpreted. You know, under after Darby and Schofield had their, you know, they came on the scene at the what, late 19th century, early 20th century, and the Schofield Bible was published. And um, these Old Testament prophecies that had always been interpreted as prophesying the advent of Christ were reinterpreted uh, as prophesying the reestablishment of the nation of, of Israel, but, of you know, the modern state of Israel. But I have one example here that uh, I thought was very interesting. Again, I'm, I'm quoting from um, 
Saint Paisios here, who was a, a monk that lived on Mount Athos. He died in 1994. And uh, he said, they turn spiritual meetings into material ones. For example, Isaiah 35, one, where it prophesies that the desert will blossom. I'm, I'm short, I'm paraphrasing and shortening here. The desert shall blossom. Well, what actually happened is they altered the course of a stream, built irrigation systems, planted gardens, banana trees, lemon trees, orange trees. They created orchards and gardens everywhere. They can say now the desert has blossomed. So they literally siphoned water from the Jordan River. I'm, I'm, I don't know, you guys lived in Israel for a while. I visited there and the Jordan River had, it was down to literally almost like a creek because they right. siphoned water off of the Jordan and I believe out of the Golan Heights to irrigate right. Israel. And, and it took water away from the Palestinian territory. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And I've heard Christian Zionists say, well, as soon as they arrived, you know, the land just, uh, it, it just became fertile and lush. It's because they stole water. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's well, it. And, and the point that you make there that's important to realize is that when they did this, the Sea of Galilee dropped drastically far mm -hmm. below its normal level. Mm -hmm. The waters are not going downstream where the Palestinians through the uh, through the, the West Bank are living at. So therefore, their farms are just getting just a little trickle of water. To, to try to be able to irrigate with the, what they're irrigating as well. So, no, you're right. And of course, they had to build the sterilization plant uh, as well, because they still can't subsidize all the water needs uh, to begin with. Uh, so, no, it didn't blossom as a rose. It was manufactured and stolen in order to be able to make it appear this prophecy is, is taking place. That is incredible. To, to, to expose this to people, because that's exactly, and I like how you read the words of this monk, where he says that they are materializing spiritual prophecies. Right. And because a lot of Christians do not live by spirit as is. They can only see with their senses, like eyes, what eyes can see, what hands can touch, mm -hmm. and they need these types of proofs, and this is how they are fooled. You know, it's all in all. Oh, Bible says the desert will blossom. Look at Israel, it blossoms. Right, right. Oh, yeah, 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 Israel blossoms. That prophecy is fulfilled. But no, the prophecy is spiritual prophecy. Right. right. He, he said um, regarding this passage, Isaiah 30, or this verse, Isaiah 35, 1, uh, it refers to the spiritual renewal of the world through the Holy Spirit, the baptism of regeneration. Yes, that's so, right. Because you are dead, considered dead when you are not born again by spirit. So you're a desert. And when you accept Jesus Christ within you, you come alive. It's like desert is blossoming. So this is what they're doing. Like, wow, please send me, like text me the name of that book because I would like to read more on, on what, what that monk had to say and explain. It's so true, right? He, Yes. He, he also, I, long, not long before he died, he um, predicted the um, little medical intervention that we just all experienced. But that's a little off topic, but I just had to mention that. <laughs> so um, I, I also just, what just came to mind was um, that, you know, materializing the kingdom uh, and the regarding the thousand year millennium, mm -hmm. there was th this, this is no, this is actually nothing new. Um, it had its resurgence with Darby and Stoke Schofield, but early in early church history, there was something called Kiliasm, yes, which was deemed as deemed a heresy in which this literal thousand year millennium was was preached and taught. And it was thrown out as, as a heresy. So uh, you're so right. And thanks for bringing this up. It's a very touchy subject, by the way. So be ready for bombardments. 
<laughs> because yeah this is like i touched on this before and oh i got so many you know i, I think they would kill me or physically if they could <laughs> because of you know i i did suggest that and i did mention the word killism because mm-hmm. it's not about literal thousand years and never is and it's it's actually in literal meaning means thousands of years meaning and predictable amount of time. So uh, it's not really about literal thousand years, but a lot of uh, pseudo Christian cults also believe in um, 1000 year millennium. And it it is a heresy It was considered heresy in early church, just like you say, and these are the subjects that we must go into, even though they sound very uncomfortable and they sound uncomfortable because of the degree of brainwashing and the reinterpretation of true Christianity that was there for 2000 years before dispensationalism even entered the scene. And right. we were just listening to uh, some documentary with Steve while we were traveling. And when Darby and Schofield, and you know, the Schofield, he belonged to a club, a, a rich man's club, I would say, mm-hmm. with, the, with the Zanish Jews. And I think the name is well, Utenma. He, he converted, but, to, uh, Samuel, uh, he converted to Christianity. He was not a Christian. I don't, I don't know about that that i i don't remember that but i just know that he was a lawyer but not really with a law degree um that's how i remember it but i have to go relook but whatever if you if you know anything you can let us know my understanding is he was uh in jail in new york city he was he was arrested for forgery and his lawyer samuel untemeyer uh was representing him and if i remember correctly and i i, I want to be very care i want to be very careful that i don't misspeak so right. this is how i'm remembering it please don't take this as act is completely accurate as i recall uh he was he had a conversion experience in prison and then uh through the help of oxford press Mm-hmm. This, his this Schofield Bible was published, although I don't believe Schofield really had much input. There were editors mm-hmm. who, you know, who put, you know, had foot, you know, placed footnotes in this Bible, uh, and maybe it was kind of sort of like a concordance. Um, but in 1967, around the time of the Six Day War, came another edition of the Schofield Bible was published. And what's interesting is some of these footnotes were changed because of the recent current events that had occurred. You know, Israel had been established as a state at that point. And these footnotes were changed by ghost writers. However, the original editors from early 20th century were were left as, you know, as the contributing editors when in fact these ghost writers went in and changed the footnotes to fit the current events. So this is this is I'm going off of memory of what I read. So this has to be vetted, but that's what I recall. Yes. <laughs> so. And you're correct because we were just yeah, listening yeah, to that. They, their, their claim was is that Schofield, they actually made it look as if he was on the board, yet he's already okay. dead. And okay. And in the book that I'm writing right now, one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting that I cite in there is the fact that his name is Cyrus. And of mm. course, in the discovery that I'd made from uh, Daniel's prophecy, the word dot is not the word Torah law, but it's from a Persian word. It's an ancient Persian word. The word dot is, which is a kingly decree. And so as in regards to this, we know that it's Artaxerxes that made the decree to build the temple. And of course, Cyrus and Darius, they both con- continued the, the legacy of Artaxerxes. And of course, the temple comes into fruition. So 
I thought it was very odd that Cyrus Schofield comes on the scene, much like the ancient biblical Cyrus. And we have the Cyrus Cylinder, which is where that it was Cyrus was the one that actually gives a decree to go back and build the temple and restore Jerusalem. And that was the proper thing for the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. But yet here they are in modern times wanting to perpetrate the biggest hoax in modern history or in all of history, I should say. And so they need a brand new Cyrus. So what mm -hmm. better fitting name for this guy, you know, uh, you know, and I, I, it makes you wonder, is that really his name? You know, or or was it a given? I mean, who knows on that issue? No, there. His name. I know they say name. Cyrus I. Schofield, right? You know, right. but the Bible Institute, they're the first ones to pick this up and really promote it. And all of your quoted biblical scholars from the early 1900s are all trained under the Schofield theology. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, it, well, and isn't it interesting that Donald Trump has been referred to as a new Cyrus, I believe. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And of course, that I mean, the push to build the third temple is underway. Uh, yeah. And I, and I have actually published uh, from one guy I know in Israel who actually is working on the very fa uh, internal fabrications mm -hmm. of the windows and the doors and uh, he has sent me oodles and oodles of the pictures of them building it and they're all being built for the third temple so they're determined to fabricate this prophecy as far as they can possibly go and so. when it comes to oxford press what was very interesting when they published schofield bible with its own kind of uh, commentary which before bible never had commentary inside of a bible Oh, that was the oh, that was the first one. right. Like it's a yeah. Bible built with its own commentary, and they were giving this in theological institutes mm -hmm. to all of the pastors that were graduating from theological studies. They were handed that Bible, so that way the new generation will brainwash all these flocks. And well, interesting thing about Oxford Press was that it was a press or they were publishers that never published any kind of book before. No other, they were unknown, like they just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they never published any American writers, nothing. They just came and published yeah. this thing, uh, Schofield Bible with its own commentary and handed it to these new uh, pastors in a, a United States theological seminary. So you can see that this was very pre-planned, very targeted plan. And I'm not talking about five-year plan. I'm talking about hundred-year plan. Long time. And uh, so whoever is doing this, that's that's very very, uh, I would say, smart on their part. But Christians are supposed to be um very you know critical Just, thinkers yeah. and gentle as doves but kind of like it's a well, smart, you know the thing smart is, as serpents we, right like you <laughs> really got duped though i mean my book that i wrote here the yes. Israel, they still god's people that's the first book i ever wrote that is a cyrus schofield yes. uh book I and mean, i hate to say it i mean as sincere as I was, right. I defended wholeheartedly the state yep. of Israel. And and uh, I want to show you right to be. my picture here. If you can see, that's me. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> right. the, the, uh, star of one, of the, one of the concentration <laughs> Yes, we went to see concentration camps. And um, it's just, we understand how strong it can be because that's all you know. And all of these intelligent scholars, you know, um, Chuck Misler was one of them that mm -hmm. we personally met. Uh, we flew to him, to his um, recorded studio, we him. recorded with him and uh, at the beginning of our ministry. So you think you have it right when you are so wrong. And, and this is what I want to tell Christians that um, you might think you're so safe and right and correct, and you will fight, fight, fight for what you think is true, and yet you can be so deceived. 
And it was a very humbling experience for us with Steve because we were in the height of our ministry in Israel. <laughs> and well, right, and, and, and the, imagine. And the people supported the Zionist yeah. theology. They yeah. really do. And God bless them for doing that. But you know, as I told Yana, one of the things, and I really am curious about some of your own personal past as well, as you spoke in the beginning of your family and your father. Um, but like I told my wife, I said, everything happens for a purpose. I said, had we not been pro Zionist to begin with, we never would have gained such a large following. I said, and so therefore, when God opened our eyes, starting with my wife first and, and then mine as well, uh, you know, and, and I think it really started too with equality. Is where it yeah, began. we start we started with, a... with equality, and then we then it went into Zionism. But right through that, that's what helped us to be able to help so many people. Um, you know, and some of them, like yourself, had already had already been putting the pieces together. You know, so but you know, so therefore, it's like I told my wife: if we didn't have the following from the Zionists we would have never helped the, the tens of thousands of people that were helped. I mean, some, they just walked away. Yeah, imagine. In fact, the majority walked away. Right, imagine being in the heights of ministry and you figured out it's all wrong. I mean, it was, uh, you go through a five stage of grief, I for real. Yes, it's, that, <laughs> is a, that is a form of grief. That yes. is a form of and, grief. And so it was like, what are we gonna do? Do I mean, we start to feel very responsible for people. And I remember our very, very first uh, time when, when we realized uh, that we, we are wrong and teaching things very wrong. Um, we were still, we didn't know what to do. So first programs were still kind of Zionist, also less, a little less, we tried to kind of lessen it. But and one evening, you know, I come to Steve to his studio and I say, look, I personally, I'm going to have to withdraw. I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this no more. I, we either come up with complete truth and it's going to be a bomb. Or, <laughs> um, you know, I don't know what will happen. So that was very difficult, but we decided to tell the truth and of our own change and why the change and i will tell you the main change came when we saw how israel is not what they say they are mm -hmm. that was the biggest um the cruel thing for the us. cruelty to palestinians the, yes and they were apartheid state i mean we were there and of course when we went before we went we would say uh, oh we're going to israel we, we support israel unconditionally and i remember us saying the only democracy in the middle east so we were so right. proud of democracy in the middle east and we arrived there and we started noticing this is not democracy this, this is not democracy right. okay first of all the state has a lot of back at that time right now they're totally talmudic theocracy with the newest government of netanyahu Ben Gavir, Smotrich, these are Kahanists, uh, Talmudists, hardcore Talmudists. Uh, but I am talking about back then, right? It's kind of a look on the outside as democracy, but it really was not. It was a fully apartheid system where uh, Palestinians were treated as a second class citizens. Uh, and uh, also, they have some laws that American Christians are completely unaware of. Uh, right. The rabbis are running the country, especially marriage divorce. And uh, it's just when I started to find all this out and saw how Palestinians are treated. And uh, Steve recalled, you know, one of his encounters with IDF where they admitted that they are practice targeting targeting the practice uh, they shooting shoot. They shoot the Palestinians on Palestinians for target practice. For target yeah. practice. I mean, so things like that. So if you truly have Jesus in your heart, Christ in your heart, how can you ever, ever you can't support something stoop like this that. low where life matters to God and he does not make difference in whether it's Palestinian life, Arab life, or right. or or German life or American life. It's there is no life is life. Right. You know. But uh, so how can, do you can, feel about Palestinians well, before today? Before we get into the Palestinians. 
if we can, you mentioned about your your father being uh, a mason, etc. So I know this has to have a lot because I know how this works, right? <laughs> well, I, a lot I, of, that was a lot of influence that you really had to deal with in your life. Uh, so I, I I was initially going to include this in my little summary statement, but then I thought, well, I'll just see if it comes up. So I have this is a very interesting little tidbit. Uh, George H. W. Bush paid my grandfather a visit at his office in Amarillo, Texas, in 1963, and I, to my knowledge, no one in the family knows what they discussed. But looking back, I suspect that he was there triaging my grandfather. My grandfather was wealthy. He was a very successful businessman, and. So I can, I can, I, anyway, I, this is pure speculation on my part, but I have to wonder. And mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, again, now that is in that, that is a whole rabbit trail. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I got it. Uh, that uh, would, you know, make interesting uh, conversation. But uh, as I believe that it's affected me to this day, uh, because they, you know, they take oaths and yes. I take these oaths and it can affect future generations from what I understand. But that's kind of a different, different rabbit trail. So, um, but it, it sends chills up my spine to know that that occurred. And and my dad told me about it probably 10, 15 years ago. Um, and I, I don't believe, you know, he didn't know what they discussed. Mm -hmm. So, so his, yes. his father never discussed with him what was spoken about in that meeting. If he did, he he didn't tell me. Uh, he mm -hmm. just told me that H. W. Bush had paid had come to see my grandfather, and I'm assuming it was it, it was the Masonic connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can believe that. I certainly can believe that. And yeah, we I would like to go to our, even if we discuss it privately one day because of some of the unique connections in there. I, so. I, yes, there's and again, this is it would be off topic, but I, I'd love to share some things. <laughs> so, yes, uh, before I forget, um, I just, well, as you were talking, of course, it's like fireworks going off in, in my mind. And um, I wanted to just mention for the, the audience that um, Whitney Webb, are you familiar with Whitney Webb? During those, I am, definitely. He wrote an article on Mint Press called The Untold Story of Christian Zionism. And I highly recommend it. July 12th, 2019, Mint Press. I, I, if you just go in the search engine and type in Whitney Webb Christian Zionism, it'll it'll come up. If you text uh, it to me, Liz, I'm going to put it on Twitter right now. People can go uh, to Twitter. Yeah, let me get my phone. Yeah. Now, like right now. We'll but... also take and uh, we'll include that a link to that article in this video as well for people to be able to look at that. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, let's see here. Uh, and there's also a YouTube version where a, a, a man is just reading the article. So it's an, it's an audio version of the article, but um, I highly recommend it because I learned things that I didn't know. And I, you know, I've been looking, I've been researching this for 15 years. Yes. So, um, Thank you for that. So it's very much, very much. Thank you. And I will tweet it out. So my Twitter is Jana Sutova, J-A-N-A, -A, last name S-U-T-O-O-V-A. And we have Twitter for Israeli News Live as well. Yeah. So both will be tweeted out on both uh, of them. So you can go ahead and uh, check it there as soon as Liz sends it to me. And I, as I recall, um, it's been a while since I read it, but she she delved into some character development of both Schofield and Darby Excellent. and you know they were they were shady characters and of course you know you don't want to commit the genetic fallacy and say shady character bad theology but they don't always go hand in hand but uh it, it, it there is a connection it is significant in terms of their lifestyles and you know how they 
because if you're filled with the spirit, you, you know, you're not going to, you know, cheat on your wife and, and yeah, abandon, and abandon your children and so forth. So um, I, I would think that that would affect one's theology to some degree. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's interesting when you mentioned the part about cheating on your wife, because I was just as I was doing a, a video for Patreon today, I'm doing the series on Planet X. It's, it's more I do that because people just seem to like those things there. But there was one particular reference and it's not biblical, but they claim it's a statement of Jesus. So whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it was so relevant to the modern era that we're living in now. And one of the statements he makes in there is that men will not be true to their marriage vow. They will, he said that it will not, fornication and adultery will not be condemned and mm -hmm. that they would just take and go and, and lust after another man's wife, take her and, 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 and all the things that are just said and that, and I actually read that one thing there. And I, as I said, I don't know what the authenticity of this is. Uh, they, they claim that it was from the sayings, which is similar to what Thomas wrote in his book, but I don't, I don't, I've never read that one before, but very, very true of the day we're living in. Uh, they yes. just don't care any longer. It's interesting that you would mention that because um, there, the this this new Christian right, well, what I guess it actually kind of began with Falwell and was it with Ralph Reed? Remember the more there was the moral majority, and then Ralph Reed. I'm trying. I'm blanking on his organization, uh, but it was you know the kind of the new Christian right, and it's there's been a lot of expose uh there there's a recent uh four-part docuseries called shiny happy people about the bill bill gothard and all the women that he assaulted and there's another author kristen dumay kristen dumay d-u-m-e-z and she's she wrote a book and uh has done a lot of speaking about these christ these Christian right leaders, many who are surrounding Donald Trump, many who are partnering with the Jewish Zionists, with the state of Israel, Netanyahu, et cetera. And there's a lot of expose on these leaders and, and sexual assault. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're in, in the Southern Baptist Convention, for instance, and they're not being held accountable, accountable, and these poor women are being told to shut up. They're being gaslit, yeah. and you know, there's there's also a big push with these men, uh, these leaders, to uh, they're very misogynistic, and um, for instance, you know, they're proposing things like when wives should call their husbands lord, and oh my god, you know, women should lose the right to vote, etc. And the reason I bring this up is because there's 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 this there's a connection here, because these Christian and they're 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 Christian Zionists. All of these far these Christian right leaders are Zionists, and they're partnering with the Jewish Zionists, with the State of Israel, et cetera. And they have this view towards women. Uh, it's because Steve, what you just shared sparked my sparked my. Uh, Memory. Well, so, that goes well, back I, to what Yana said earlier, you know, when she mentioned this part about, you know, that, you know, it's really not Netanyahu and them that are running the country of Israel. It is the Talmudic rabbis. And, mm -hmm. and when we say that, you know, in all fairness, too, we had this beautiful uh, conference of rabbis here in New York not long ago. They had 20,000 Orthodox Jews there uh, opposing the state of Israel and the apartheid. Mm -hmm that they have committed against the Palestinian people. So we realize not, not you know, and of course I still don't go with, with the, the faith by no means, but nonetheless, it's, it's kind of refreshing to see that there are some, you know, Jewish people out there that will not stand for this wholesale genocide that's going on in the Middle East. And when you mention women, uh, I do want to mention when uh, right wing Netanyahu's government took uh, took um, power and talking about Smotrich Ben Gvir and that group there, they are now in power. They're Talmudic extremists, Kahanists. 
uh, violent murderers ca calling for violence and killing of uh, women and children in Palestine. Uh, there were so many protests in Israeli public against them, against the right wing Israeli government of Netanyahu. <laughs> and a lot of women went out dressed as handmaid's tail. Yes. Uh, well, they had these long, uh, you know, the, red. The, the, right, right. For those that may not know that series that they had, right. it's so it's Why? very demonic, but yeah. so revealing of what they're up to. Why? Because they knew that when the right wingers in Israel take power, the women will be oppressed because they are doing Talmudic law. And Talmudic yeah. law is so patriarchal, but I would say demonically evil patriarchy. That's that's what I would call it because they they are calling for a separation of which is male and female separated bus in Israel buses oh, public they, transport. They've been pushing for that. Oh, interesting. Doing it, but yeah. now it will be open like it will become law. It, it will be a law, religious yeah. law. It's going to be a Talmudic law in a state of Israel, openly admitted. That's what they want to do. Women in a bus are in a back on way. And, and oh wow! Yes. Oh, Clarify uh, before we go much further, though, the Handmaid's Tale, when I say demonic, I'm not saying that the series is demonic, but it's demonic what it's depicting of mm -hmm. the of society that, that although it's very seems nearly impossible that that could happen. Don't be surprised, yeah. uh, especially yeah. in light of the election right now, you know, everybody wants to say Kamala is so evil and horrible, you know, yeah. and I, I don't think that she has the ability to be a president personally, but do they think that Trump, right. some moral uh, mm -hmm. beacon on the hill? No, this man is saying that you're going to see your last president. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay, too, right. So, and by the way, in case you guys are not aware of this, I haven't told you this or not yet, okay. but in America, they are the, the Jewish uh, rabbis believe that America should be a theocracy. Okay. So, so when Trump made that statement, he didn't just make that by chance. He made that by no doubt knowing what their uh, desire is, what their uh, and, and by the way, if you're going to have the these these kings that follow this thing in Israel eventually, you know maybe they do change the way this country is run, the, the way they're wanting to do it anyway. And that's a totally different subject, but I just wanted to throw some. Yeah, the Noah hide laws. Uh... They want to do no hide laws on <clears throat> nations, and since uh, America supports Israel in everything, all they need is huge crisis, and people will be asking for some order, and they're gonna bring this religious order of, mm -hmm. uh, of Jews, and then what we're gonna do, right? It's gonna be awful. Right. Um, so we're having this conversation more with you, just as an open. Uh, <laughs> but but the th the truth of the matter is, we're supposed to be sitting here really going into. What woke you up? What made you okay. come to the Zionism? Because, well, she, she did mention it in her summary. Yeah, I know, I know. But, I know. And it's uh, exciting to do this I, interview this way because you, you realize you're talking to someone that understands on a deep mm -hmm. level like you do. Yeah. And uh, so it's very exciting to get to have someone that we can. We're going to have to do a more in depth interview. Maybe where yes. even the two of you girls sit here yes. and talk about this because you know, you all will be like Whoop, right over my head. <laughs> no, she, I, I believe at least you woke up on your own with your own critical thinking and your own intelligence. I would, well, critical thinking in the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, right. yes. Yes. and uh, Holy Spirit is the teacher. That's right. Uh, I, you know, I. Again, I think the, the first incident that I recall was when this ambassador to Bahrain spoke in church. And um, but it, it's just learn, you know, learn you learn incrementally. Um for instance, um I, I thought of one in, I thought of one example uh when you were talking in the uh massacre at Der Yassin, uh, in I don't recall what the it was shortly after the the invasion of the the Zionist uh, army, but was it now? You probably know. Was it a Men Menachem Begin? It was Menachem Begin or Menachem Begin. I'm probably mm -hmm. not pronouncing it correctly. 
was he part he was either part of the stern gain or the ergen yes which was, which, he was part of the stern gain that is okay correct. and they in the middle of the night they <laughs> invaded the village of der yasin and just massacred what about 200 people innocent men women and children pregnant women and now a holocaust memorial sits on top of the dead bodies of these people mm. and i just think the the chutzpah to commit a heinous crime like this and then cover it up with another crime with another right historical and, and you know, Liz, when you bring that up as well, what's even worse is what people may not even know is that right before the War of Independence, when the British were rounding up uh, those suspected of getting ready to start a fight there to, to, you know, for this War of Independence, the very Palestinian families were hiding uh, the people like the Stern Gang and the other gang that they had there that was uh, that, that becomes a, the government basis to begin with, they were hiding them and keeping from the British from capturing them, really showing them a benevolence of love, and then only to have their backs stabbed by by them and murdered by them, uh, the very even the very community there. Uh, that was hit by Hamas uh, when they came inside of Israel there that was very close to the border. I forget the name of it, but that was another one like what you're talking about there where it was just that community was a, was a Palestinian community and uh, right before the War of Independence and they were protecting them and then they come in on their war and they just slaughtered them. And that's why we have Gaza today. These are the Palestinians that were driven and it truly, you know, when they talk about the largest open air prison on the mm -hmm. planet, mm -hmm. it truly is. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't yes. put people, I don't care if it's a city, a jail or whatever it is, and then put a huge gigantic fence all the way around it and then tell this people that should be independent and free what you can get, when you can get it, when you can have water, when you can have food. I mean, they talk about Gallant saying, you know, that they're animals and we're going to cut off all these things here. That's already been cut off for 75 years. They, they've they been determining for 75 years when they can eat, drink, sleep, walk, talk, and anything else for that matter. I don't know if you know the blue wolf technology that they have on, they had on these Palestinians on West Bank and I think Gaza. Uh, I, now it's Gaza is no more actually. I mean, this is being totally right. Right. It's genocide. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, yeah. yeah, Blue Wolf technology, people need to look it up because we're going to talk about this in depth. But that's what's coming to United States as well. We're all going to be Palestinians. And that's what I want to say to you. <laughs> that's why they call us Hamas. And that's why I, I want to say to Zionist Christians, they're walking into a trap. They're so brainwashed, unwilling to listen and arguing and turning on their brothers and sisters in Christ here in America, who mm -hmm. I have open eyes. They won't hear us. They will attack us in the most nasty ways, protect Talmudic mm -hmm. Jews. Call Talmudic Jews the chosen people and their brothers instead of us, the, the true brothers in Christ. Okay. And what they're doing is walking into a trap. And just like Palestinians were helping Jews during Second World War, when Jews were entering Palestine and they were helping them, and the Jews turned on them. That's coming. This is what's yes. coming on Zionist Christians, but will be way, way too, too late. And the only one thing I can say, bad thing about it, is that they are causing us, those who don't want anything to do with this, we're going to have to suffer because of them. Yes, I, you mentioned the uh, Palestinians uh, protecting and hosting some of the uh, Zionist army, I believe is what you said. I, I, I forgot to mention another significant book I read was Blood Brothers by Elias Shakur, uh, who became a, a Catholic, a Melkite Catholic priest in Jerusalem. He was, he was actually nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. And in his book, he talks about um, how his family actually hosted Zionist uh, soldiers 
you know, gave them coffee, food. I believe they may have even stayed in their home a night or two. And, and then they, of course, drove them out of their village and burned their village down on Christmas day. Yes. Of all days. Hmm. So I, 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 I didn't mention that book, but it is very, it was also a, a, a significant, I, I read that book right before I went to Palestine in 2015. So that's, I do want to say that Jews do, are the ones who hate Christmas. And even though Jesus wasn't born December 25, but that's a Christian. <clears throat> Christians remade this holiday into remembering Christ. And the thing is, they hate Christmas. And they are the ones who put in this uh, teaching and theology that, oh, it's a pagan holiday. Don't do it. That's because they want to replace it with menorah. OK, mm -hmm. they want just any remembrance of Christ just out that's that the talmud is against jesus so anything about jesus they hate and they will do any right. avenues to re-educate christians you know so one, one thought, thought too to throw in here is that rabbi uh the israeli rabbi new, who lives in new york and teaches from new york uh Mitzrahi, he has stated more recently uh that when you conquer the land that the Jews are commanded to destroy all idol worship. And he says, I doubt that we'll ever get the courage to do it. He said, but we're supposed to destroy it. Churches, everything, mosques, destroy them all. This is one of the reasons why in Gaza they're destroying, it doesn't matter how old it is. In Lebanon, they go to Tyre, the ancient city of Tyre. They destroy all the ancient artifacts there, 5,400 year old city. But, you know, I was thinking about like what you had just mentioned earlier and you Liz as well. And I'm thinking about the telltale signs. Paul Bagley got one of the strangest statements ever made. And I don't know if he even realized what was happening. He was talking, he was doing an interview uh, with uh, Yehuda Glick, the uh, Knesset member at the time. And uh, they were talking about coming to Israel. They were so excited. Him and Heidi were going to go to, uh, Heidi that is, they were going to go to Israel and visit with them. But Yehuda was already anticipating some very, for the judicial reforms to change. And uh, he knew it was coming. But what he says to Paul, Paul never caught. We caught it, but mm -hmm. Paul didn't catch it, I know right? what you're about to say. Right? Yeah. And go he ahead. says to him, he says, well, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do so because the time I come in to visit with him a certain way and he's in. No, the, okay, you know I, I, the I know the goes? details. Still I know tell the, the statement because we <laughs> yeah. know what it means. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So, you got my curiosity uh, up here. <laughs> right. Well, it's not, it's nothing major, but I will tell you why it's really caught our attention because Paul Begley is very happy. He's having him on, on a show promoting Yehuda Glick, Yehuda Glick, you know, with and his organization right. for and Christians to support his organization. To support a third right. temple for like, you know, Glick says that it's a, um, it will be a place for prayer for all nations, right? Now, we, we know very well what the blasphemy this is. Uh, but so Paul Begley says, oh, you know, Yehuda, we are going to Israel with Hedy and maybe we can meet up and have a dinner together, eat together and all that. So Glick uh, kind of politely says, yeah, well, maybe well, we're not going to really, you know, we will see. Well, we don't know what kind of changes are. Coming, yeah, changes right? are coming. Oh. I think we will have a dinner together. We'll see. But, you know, and like he was right. shying away. Well, what, what there's Paul, a reason there's a reason but we understand it because we know Judaism so well we know Talmudic Jews so well and Talmud and Zohar Kabbalah Shulchan Aruch and all of that right mm -hmm. so what Paul Begley doesn't understand and he's the evangelical pastor right. okay well he doesn't understand the orthodox Jewish rabbi like Yehuda Glick he's not gonna sit down and eat with him he can't <laughs> You can't. You know. you can't. Especially like, when, and this is what the point was, the reforms are supposed to be coming. They haven't enacted them yet, but once they do, mm -hmm. it would be against the law yeah. for him to sit at the same table and eat as with a Gentile. With a Gentile. No matter how much. Let Paul, alone a Christian. See, no matter how much Paul Begley will uh, just 
just have them on and be kind. Doesn't matter the kindness, doesn't matter the amount of money he will give to Yehuda Gleik. In the eyes of Gleik, he's always going to be a goy. Sure. Always less, always sure. second class citizen, never equal to a Jew. And he's going to just use him up to get the money for promotion, for get the money, get the support. And then he's under Noahide law. Rabbi he, Mizrahi that's it. stated, that's, he right. stated publicly, he said, you take those guys like Hagee and them, maybe he was a different minister, but he's one of the well-known ones. He said, they send, what, $1 million to Israel donation. Don't blow up the churches. He said, okay, but eventually <laughs> we're going to blow them up. Yeah. I wow. mean, they just, mm. th that's what evangelical Christians don't understand, don't the understand. theology of of uh, uh of these israeli jews who are uh, running the country right now mm -hmm. is not friendly to the gentiles or christians at all and palestinians now and christians are so quiet and supporting this genocide it's coming on them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's coming on them they're going to get it just as much um, but, yeah i i don't I wonder about again. I, I I mentioned the the kind of the new Christian right that surrounded Donald Trump and uh, is partnering with people like Yehuda Glick, uh, uh, Tuli Wise, three sixty Israel three sixty five yeah. Bible, so so on and so forth. And in their minds, in in these Christian nationalists, in their minds, they want to set up a Christian theocracy in the United States but they're partnering with these Talmudists. And I think, do you guys understand, do you guys know what, <laughs> are you on this? Are you yeah. secretly on the same page with them? And you know, and you know, you think, well, if we just buddy up with these guys, they won't turn on us. Or are, are they just on two completely different tracks and the Christian nationalists are in for a big surprise. I don't, you know, I don't know because I, I don't know who's in the know and who's not. I, it's, but it's very interesting to to look at this partnership, mm -hmm. the bridge that they're on, okay. and they, yeah, and and they they have two different goals, really. Well, it's isn't a it Christian dominionism. They want Christian society reconstructionism. The it's basically but, the reconstructionism, yeah. Yes, but it's not going to be um, Christianity that's real and true, and it is under umbrella of Judaism because right. their friends, their their Ju Judaic friends that they're on a bridge on, preach Noahide laws, and they are saying that they are going to redo Christianity to be compatible with the Noahide laws. So it's interesting what they are working on. But back then, four, four years ago, when we were really, really at the heights of our activity, exposing Noahide laws and their dangers uh, mm -hmm. for Christians, um, we got so uh, persecuted because enormous amount of people woke up to Noahide laws and big, big uh, names that we, I debated, what was his name? We debated oh, a yeah, Jewish yeah, yeah. Uh, preacher. Um, oh, was it Brown? Yeah, yes, Michael Brown. Michael Brown, Michael Brown who's who's yeah. who's professing Christian, actually, is from he my is. But, but he says there is nothing wrong with Noahide laws. Or tell, or ta I believe I list I watched that interview and I believe he you know he didn't have issue with the the Talmud either, and as I recall, right. no. which that, is that kind of makes one. you wonder, and I don't I don't. I don't mean it by speaking against him by no means, but you can't but wonder if it's not infiltration as well, mm -hmm. uh, just to help mold the thoughts and thinking of Christians to stay on a certain course. And then Biltz or Biltz. I, was, um, I just thought of Mark Biltz and yes. Zach Shapira. Mark Biltz actually came against us very openly because we came against Noahide laws. And then he gave his own little speeches in support of Noahide laws. And he told his congregation he hopes that they come in very soon to the United oh, States. Oh, wow. Okay, well. Yeah, there is a video of him saying that. So, um, right. So it's, it's just incredible. But you can see that that's where they're heading. So that's why we have to be on a watch and we have to... Uh, I think that our biggest duty right now as Christians 
is to openly expose this plan, openly expose what Zionism is about, and our voices against the genocide that's happening and violence that Israelis are doing is very important. I believe it's just like um, cleansing uh, of or, or, or turning, you know, dividing goats and sheep. Like Christian, who is on the side of violent Israel and promoting genocide, uh, it's, they're taking their side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not side of Jesus. Jesus would never have anything to do with this. No, no, and I, you know, I certainly, I. I want to be careful, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm Jew bashing, okay, because um, I I know there were how many thousands of Jewish people in New York City who right. went down to the train station and protested the genocide yes. and um, yes. Yes, they did. Jewish, Jewish students on college campuses who have had snipers aiming rifles at them because they're protesting. So I just, I just want to you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we have to give the disclaimer, you know, that we're not, we know that there are Jewish people who are just as, uh, just as opposing this genocide as much as we yes. are. And that's and, exactly right. Very and, you know, I, I say thank you because um, we have to, you know, we, we can't do it alone. That's right. And all, all of the authors you mentioned and journalists are Jewish. Right. Well, Other, except for Michael Hoffman. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they are Jewish. There's really very few Gentiles. Well, I, as I said in the beginning, I don't like to divide right. money. Sure. But what I'm saying, Ilan Pape, David Sheen, when, I, when I'm talking Gideon Levy, uh, Israel Shahak, I mean, th those books are a must. If you want to know the truth, get all Israel Shahak's books and start reading. The shock you're going to come into. <laughs> When you read them, even to a point where he exposes what Judaism is truly about at the core, what they teach in the, the core. Yeah. Like, let's say when they're doing these prayers in a, uh, uh, by the wall and mm -hmm. they're making this movement. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know that it's a sexual movement? I've, I've heard that. I've, I've, yes. I've, I've well, that's that. Israel Shahak exposes it, what Jews that's, believe. That's about. right. He did. He did. Yes. And uh, those books, Elon Pape and Israel Shahak's books are well-documented, well-sourced. I mean, the, yes. the, the footnotes are, are just endless. <laughs> so um, unlike uh, the book, Time Immemorial, which has been debunked right and left, uh, Norman Finkelstein does a, a good job of, of debunking that that um, you got that book. I'm sure you're familiar with that book, Time Immemorial. That's the one that that kind of promoted the myth, um, a land without a people for a people without a land, I believe. Right. So, so. Yes. Well, listen, we are like uh, at the end of our broadcast, but uh, I would love to have you on uh, to focus on a very narrow, more specific subject to a greater detail, because I see you are very well read and uh, your understanding of this subject is very nice. And I believe that that's what people really need. They need basics and they need to focus at one thing at a time because we're kind of, we were all over here right now. I mean, we're just- Yes, well, and I know you start talking about this and I say, it's like fireworks going off and your mind right. is going, you know, <laughs> 10 thoughts come in at once and your mind is going, you know, all different directions, because this is a loaded subject. <laughs> it is, it is. And, you know, you don't know where to begin to explain this to people. Like, where do you begin? So right. Hope where do you begin? Best. Right. Probably, it probably is best to say, focus on a, a sub a subtopic or, or a section of it. Yeah. So, yes, uh, that's not easy with me. Well, we, we are having a lot of plans with Steve. We are planning on having, um, no, we call it Bible study, or let's say study, Zionist studies on Zoom, where we go at the one subject at a time to depth so we can clear all of the subjects out and all of the biblical verses that Zion is used. We can kind of slowly undo them one by one. So that way people can, uh, that's what they're asking us for because some people who are open to learn, they say, look, I'm a Zionist, but I'm, I'm listening and I wanna learn. I wanna see your point because I'm worried, okay? 
uh, even a lot of Zionist Christians now, when they see this genocide, they just don't feel good in here. That sure. tells, you know, that tells me that there is maybe some Holy Spirit asking them within their soul. So there is a great need to to have your voice out right now. There has to be cognitive dissonance. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, I would welcome you back again and leave uh, us a message or, or a comment below if you would like Liz to come on again to more narrower subject, specific subject. We can explore it together, Liz. And yeah. you're a very intelligent lady, by the way. Those who don't know, she is a pharmacist so she is very learned very educated and um, just very smart lady and i can't thank jesus enough that you're my sister in christ and that you can see a uh, bible through lenses of christ being everything and all everything yes and yes throughout the old testament uh i it's such a blessing to talk with both of you i've followed your content for oh it's probably been 10 years um it i have something on my heart it's 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 like a 30 second sermon <laughs> would sure. i would you allow me just to i have this final parting words that sure. i feel very uh compelled to say is that okay yes yeah okay i just um i just have to say you can't have one foot in the synagogue and one foot in the church. You can't raise the Israeli flag with your right hand and hold the cross with your left. You can't hold the Talmud in your right hand and the Bible in your left. Choose. Do you want to be in Christ or under the rabbis? Make a choice and do it. Amen. 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 Sorry. Amen. <laughs> that was a little bit. I went from preaching to meddling. No. <laughs> Listen, that, Very that's nice. like the, that little series that started a minute of truth. That's a perfect message. We might, that. if with your permission, could we put on our minute of truth? Okay. Very good. Yes. So yeah. we can just I, throw yeah. it out I'm gonna, there. We'll put it in here, but yes. we'll add it to that as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I was going to quote. Uh, choose you this day whom you will serve yeah that, that's the book of joshua so if i i'm Amen. terrible with references and you can't I'm, sit on two chairs at the same time because you will fall in between right, right. that's another scripture by uh, i think it's an i don't know which gospel it is in but it's somewhere there kingdom divided against itself self can't stand yeah mm -hmm. wow everything just comes in with holy spirit starts putting all these scriptures here that belong to that subject that's amazing mm. well thank you so much you are very precious yes. and oh we still thank you so you. wonderful to talk with you guys i love you guys i've followed you for years <laughs> so. and we love you too and stay in touch you got my private phone uh phone number so we can text each other and i would love to have some further uh shows with you I'd love that if the Lord leads and the Lord wants, and um, I, I'll just follow his leading. So, Amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. Thank you guys thank for you. watching. God bless. Have thank a wonderful you. day. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for, for okay. watching, everyone. Stephen and Yana Benu with our sister Liz here coming out of Zion. Zionism. Part, I don't know, three, four, five, somewhere in there. It's part four, I think. Part four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Mm -hmm. May it stop. Y'all can talk for me.